Okay, good afternoon. It's uh, about two o'clock and it's Friday the 22nd of May and I'll uh, do the intro and then I'll um, going to show you a bit that I did from the other day and never completed it. So I'll chuck that in there now then I'll get back to you. Okay, good afternoon. Um, today is Saturday. No, is it? No, yes, no, it's Sunday. I'll start again. Take two. Good afternoon. Today is Sunday. Um, the day after lockdown, end of lockdown rather. I was going to take the camera out yesterday and I forgot, I went out about it. Uh, but there wasn't really much to see. We were going to go out for a little ride around and a walk. Um, and we see what's open and what's not. Probably see more tomorrow about what's going to be open and what's not going to be open. But we'll have a little look around today. It's typical of over here, lack of communication really. Because uh, we never know what's going on. Uh, we started off on Friday the 15th. That we're coming out of enhanced lockdown into general lockdown. Then at 2 o'clock in the morning, the Mayor's Office sent out a notice saying that Angelis um, is not coming out of enhanced lockdown. We're going into modified enhanced lockdown, or quarantine, sorry, not lockdown. Um, and then we're told in Saturday morning, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, we're definitely in um, normal general lockdown, uh, general quarantine. Everything can function as normal. Well, we knew the bars were going to open up, that was obvious, but we was expecting a lot more things happening. Um, but then there was um, the liquor ban. As far as we know, the liquor ban was lifted from midnight on the Friday night. And we went out yesterday and a lot of shops said, no, 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 it's still liquor ban. Other shops said, no liquor ban. So it's lack of communication in this country is really, really good. Um, but hey-ho, that's what it is. Anyway, so we'll catch you again in a minute. Okay, um, I can't remember, because I can see I'm doing this before I've actually re-seen what I videoed the other day, uh, the other week actually. Um, if I remember correctly, I said that the uh, alcohol ban was at Gwilapia, the liquor ban was finished. But what happened was, in about, after about three hours, it came back in again. And it was finally lifted about two days ago. So, as it stands at the moment, we haven't got a liquor ban. Uh, the Mayor here decided that we won't go into general lockdown, we've got to stay in enhanced lockdown, or sorry, enhanced quarantine, which is where we are now. But what is happening is more and more stuff's opening up, as you'll see in a minute, in the corner. Um, there's a lot more stuff open now, uh, the shops are selling alcohol again, and it's slowly coming back to normal until 8 o'clock. But I'll tell you about that one. And Later on when I'm back. So I'm going to have a little walk around now. One of the first things that's new is we've now got a little store here. Very reasonably priced fruit and vegetable. Um, about the same price as the market, Bumping Market. So that was that's a nice little bonus since that's opened up. Nice fresh veg. The bronchi barriers are still up, as you can see. That hasn't changed yet. I mean, we've still got another week to go, but we don't know what the hell's happening as normal. And us foreigners are usually the last to know anyway. Still just as quiet. The roads are busy, and I will take the camera out on the scooter as soon as I get a chance and give you a chance to see how the roads are now. The roads are getting a lot busier. But, uh, right, I'll catch you again in a sec. Well, I've just been in the mini stop here, this one here. Um, that's our local one, you've been there with me before. And they've still got the liquor banning pools here. It's pretty strange. The mini stop man where we used to live, selling alcohol, both of them. The one in Santos and the one in uh, MacArthur. And the one here, not. And then you walk around the corner to JJ's, the main supermarket, selling. This is what I say the information here um, is terrible. Even their own people don't know what the hell is going on all the time. It's not like in the UK and America and Australia and where else, where there's a stack of information everywhere. People don't tend to watch TV like we do in England and the rest of the world. Um, 
So anyway, but anyway, catch you in a minute. Okay, I'm uh, back at the apartment now. Um, let's just make yourself comfortable. Right, this is the apartment. I don't know if I've actually taken you around the apartment. I'm not going to do it this time. I will do it one day. I, I think I, I can't remember. I'll have to check. But, right, news so far. It's strange here at the moment because no one actually knows, like I said, what's going on. We really don't know. Um, even the Filipinos don't know what's going on properly. As far as we know, the enhanced quarantine period finishes midnight next Friday. As I say, the mayor here, he wants, he's running his own agenda. I'm not going to go into that, I'm not going to go into the politics of it all because it's nothing to do with me. I'm just Johnny Foreigner here. Um, so we, we accept everything that's going on and we're very polite to everybody and we, we have to take it as it is. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm getting uncomfortable sitting like that. I'm trying to get the best comfort position to talk to you. I'm sure we're sitting up the video and everything else on the table, which I don't really feel like doing. Yeah, so we don't know what's going on. I, mean, I, say, I don't think even the Filipinos know what's going on properly here. It is what it is. We know we can out buy booze. So apart from the mini stop, as I just said, the mini stop here, Everywhere we've been, including the, the supermarkets. I don't know about SM, we haven't been over there again lately. Um, went over there the other day and the booth part was shut then, but so was the Everywhere Else. And there wasn't much open anymore. It was nice to see the mall open again. Cyberzone wasn't open, where the phones are. And a lot of the shops weren't open. The optician was open. Um, no, not, I don't think I saw any of the clothes shops open. We'll have a walk over there. Um, over the next couple of days and we'll see what's going on. I'll take this with me, take it with me. Uh, right, what else? Yeah, things are starting to open up as we as we've gone round, as I've gone round, there's more and more places opening and a lot of places get rid of open. The motorbike bike shops are all opening now. When look at the H yesterday, I will, I'll go back again with the camera so that those of you out there that like bikes can see the ace. I like the ace. Um, we have got a nice one in there, works out about, I think about 1,600 quid, it's gorgeous, fully kitted out for touring, it's a 400cc bike, British design, the guy that made the Ace in Britain packed up and came over here, and it's now made down the Subic, so, <coughs> excuse me, it's a, though it's British design, it's actually built here, and it's, as I say, it's built by a British guy. Uh, what else? Yeah, so I'd love to go to one of them. Maybe next time I come over, when I've got my full pension, I can afford one. It, when I come over with full pension, etc. Right, what else? The other night, um, I was coming back, I went out to get some booze. And I was coming back about quarter to eight, back in, uh, which is uh, 1945, for us clever people. And come back into the Bongo, and they, they were just getting to put the barriers up. For eight o'clock for the curfew, twenty hundred hours for the curfew. And as I, I rode through, the one of the brown guy classics was waving at me, and I thought he was waving me on because the signal for over here to stop is the same as in England to wave you on. Which, if I can do it so your camera can see me, he's going like this. Which, as we know, in England means and probably most of the world, carry on. But over here, it means pull over. So I carry on going and. The, one was come after me on a bike, and he said, uh, papers. Fat by your papers. Uh, oh, I'll get done for racism. Um, and I said, uh, in the apartment, you know, I don't carry them around with me. So he said, you have to have your papers. I said, well, I haven't got anything on me. You know, I'm wearing just a pair of shorts. I've just been out to buy some, some drink, which is perfectly legal. And he said, go to the police station before. So off I toddled on the bike around the police station floor and I made to stand at the back and they're processing criminals and all Filipino and there's all sorts going on and I'm just sort of standing there minding my own business. Uh, pretty much as would at ease because I'm comfortable like that. Anyway, behind the desk of a police a PMP sergeant was a Philippine Army sergeant. So he looked up and seen me, he said something to the Bronco guy, plastic, in Tagalog. And looked at me, he said, are you okay? I said, yes, thank you, Sarge. And he looked at me, he said, are you military? Ex-military, Sarge, Royal Artillery, Sarge. And he said, let that man go. 
and said he'd get him to go like, anyway this bronco plastic kicked up a stink so he got this plain clothes PMP to come over to me the gun and everything else and the PMP guy says what's going on so I said first of all he said how old are you I've been in my now it's about 20 past half past eight I said uh, 65 sir so he said you shouldn't be out you're over 60 I said yeah I wasn't out at the time of being pulled over I said it was before the curfew so he said something to this plastic pretty much to the words of why have you pulled him over when he's on about papers so I said well what are you doing so I explained what I've been doing he said well you're innocent I don't understand why you're in here he said look just stand here for a minute and I'll go and get a PMP officer to deal with you rather than let him shout at you. I said, thank you very much sir Anyway, he's disappeared, and about 15 minutes later, uh, a PMP guy come up, young bloke, and I explained it again to him. He said, well, where, where's all your papers? So I said, he's in my apartment in Flora Street. So he said, go and get them. And he said, no, he said, would you go and get them? I said, yes, sir, absolutely. Can you walk round, because you can't take the scooter, or would you like us to give you a lift? I said, I'll walk round, not a problem. So I walked back here, got all my papers for the scooter and for me, and went back, showed it all to him, and they checked everything out, and they said, yep, you're free to go. And this plastic was stuck doing his nut. No, 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 he, he's in violation, he's in violation. So the PMP guy said, he's, technically he's correct, because you should have your papers on you. And he said, first thing tomorrow, get photocopies, don't take your originals, get photocopies and keep them in the bag. Absolutely, sir, no problem at all. And this PMP guy started, uh, this wrong guy plastic started shouting at the PMP. And I th pretty much from what I could translate, the PMP guy basically told him to shut up or he would be arrested. And uh, off I toddled, I got back on the school to come home and pour myself a stiff brandy. No, gin, actually. Because I've now got gin and I've got whiskey and I've got Peridol and I've got Thunderdor rum. I've got, so I've got a nice little selection now. And I've got beer. Um, so that was my, you know, I've got to admit, the first. First few minutes of being in a police station like that, not knowing what the hell's going on, no one speaking English, is a bit unnerving. But once the army sergeant acknowledged me, and then this plain clothes guy, and then this young PNP, uh, it became an adventure then. And um, yeah, so it's something to put on the channel. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's that little adventure. What else has happened? Um, we have three bars that we know we can go to at the moment. Um, Two are restaurants, and one is a secret place that I can't tell you about yet. But once everything is officially open, I'll take you there and explain this is where we used to get our beer. They're all quite expensive to drink at, but you know these are places that are running secretly. Um, one of the restaurants is nice, but very expensive, and. Again, I can't say too much because I don't know who's going to be watching the channel. Um, and that one's really, really nice, and the food is fantastic. And I can say as much as the fact it's an Italian restaurant. And I can, again, once we come out of lockdown, we, we, I will take you to all these places and say, this is where I used to go. But until after lockdown, I can't sort of do much. Um, so we're still getting our beers. I mean, the cheapest one is the other one, which is 100 peso for a beer, which normally in Cherries was about 45 peso. Um, and then the other two, one's 120, and one is 120 for a can, which is a real markup. But on the other hand, these guys are taking a risk. I don't know, wind's picking up out there. Are we going to get a storm? Um, it's like when you, out here you sort of notice where the wind picks up because most of the time there's no wind. Um, yeah, so, but again, as I say, I will show the channel these bars when everything goes back to normal, if it ever goes back to normal. No one knows what's going on. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. You guys in England, Australia, and wherever else, you've got a lot more knowledge about what's going on. In fact, I don't know about Australia and anywhere else, but England is getting a lot back to normal. The, there's a few bars open up. They've had hardly any cases here. You know, it's less than a thousand, if I remember correctly. 
No, it's 600, 700 deaths, and I think about 2,000 cases. And of them, something like 30% are guaranteed recovery. Yeah, I've already recovered. There's a lot more going on here than the COVID. I, I yeah, it's. I, I, as I say, I'm not going to go into the politics of it all because it's not my place. I'm just Johnny Foreign, I'm a visitor here, I'm a guest here, so I'm not going to go into the politics of it here. Um, what else is it to tell you? That's a you, really. That's why I haven't really done much of the channel because there's nothing going on. I mean, I could take the same old places with nothing going on. Oh, hang on, one other bit before I forget. Cherries. Popped in to see Cherries yesterday, you know, Cherries Bar, where we go, I go a lot. Uh, popped in there yesterday, they've now taken their beer delivery, so they're ready to open as soon as they get the nod that they can open. Hopefully sooner rather than later, because I do miss Cherries. Um, I miss all the guys in there. Uh, yeah, anyway, but as I was saying, there's not much going on here. I, I could do what other bloggers do and, oh look, this is what it's like under lockdown, but it's the same. Um, nothing, you know, as I say, things are starting to be open, but Nothing drastic. You, you know, I could take you for a walk out there and see what. As I say, this it's the same thing. Walking Street is still shut, so there's nothing going on there. All the bars are still shut. Um, we can't go anywhere yet. But, so I've now I've got transport. I want to get to the haunted hospital, the um, abandoned military hospital in Clark, but because I can't go into Clark officially. So it's pointless doing that until we come out of whatever quarantine period we're, we're going to come out of, I don't know. No one knows, I know I keep saying that, but it's so true here. You know, like I say, you, you, in England, your golf courses are opening up. I've got emails telling me the golf courses are open. Golf courses aren't open here, and I can't understand why they've shut golf courses anywhere. Because let's face it, we definitely practice social distancing playing golf. This is the way I play golf. Um, but no, they're all shut, the driving range is shut, and again, you're definitely social distance in the driving range because of what it is. But uh, who knows? I, I don't know that you know, these people that make these decisions have paid a lot more money than me to make these decisions. That's about all the news. There's nothing else I can really tell you. Um, it's not much to show you, as I say. If anything happens, I... I will. If things change and when it opens up, then there'll be more content. Now I can upload it quickly. I mean, this will be edited probably this afternoon and uploaded this evening when it gets a bit cooler out there because it's hot to sit out there with a the laptop. Um, so when I can, I'll do stuff. And it's ridiculous to say now I've got a chance to be able to upload stuff quicker because of the Wi Fi. Um, there's nothing much to tell you. I mean, I'll kick and I'll take the camera out and then show you what. I can't take you in the bars that I go to because that's not allowed for obvious reasons. Um, going out on a bike ride, you know, when I go out on a scooter, you've seen it all. Again, I don't want to bore people on the channel, I'm trying to avoid that. Um, I've gained a few subscribers, which is nice. Not getting the views that I'd like, but hey ho. I thought everybody under lockdown and quarantine, I else you might be I might get more views, but I don't know. One day I'll find the the magic formula. But anyway that's it for now. Um, as I say I'll get this edited in the next few minutes and get it uploaded this evening so it'll be your morning in England, uh, your early morning in America and your late evening scrumpy. Alright scrumpy mate. Uh, in uh, Australia. So, to everybody, oh, if Angel watches this quickly, um, I, would, I would have wished you happy birthday anyway by now, you and your mum. Happy birthday to the two of you. Uh, hopefully we'll all meet up soon, uh, along with JC and Carlo and Howie. We hope we all meet soon for a drink and a good laugh and up to carry home. Um, just thought I'd give you all a mention. Bessie Angel for his birthday. And that's about it for now. Um, Pat and all the other guys in England, keep safe. Rick, Rose, see you and Don and everybody else. I'll see you all very soon, I hope. Who knows? I don't. I've got no idea. I know the flight's starting in Clark. Emirates are flying out on June the 1st. And I was talking to an English guy on one of the Facebook pages. And he's booked a flight out 
tuna fist, costing weight for it £1,600. So yes, I can fly home from tuna fist, but I am not paying £1,600. Quid. Sorry about that, I know you guys really want me home, but I'm not doing it. When the flights get to normal and everything else, I, I should be coming home and I should be coming back. I will be coming back here. I love it here. Despite everything that's going on, I've probably had a lot more freedom than you got in England. Up until now, you seem to be getting the freedom back again. But I love it here. It's a fantastic place to be. And I think that's about it. So, right, don't forget, please, thumbs up if, on, on YouTube, preferably, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have. Uh, with love and comments, um, what else? That's about it, really. Um, please share, 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 share. And tell all your friends. And if you're not really a subscriber, please subscribe. And I'll catch you all again whenever it's going to be for the next video. As soon as something happens, I'll be doing another video. But till then, bye as you bye. Take, take care and stay safe. Thanks for watching my YouTube video. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Bye.